Good morning, Toppers. I'm Scotty Moore. <laughs> and I'm Sebastian Carina. Welcome to the Top Report. We've only got four days into Halloween, and to celebrate the spooky month, classes are holding a door decorating competition. That's right. Let's go to Olivia and see what's happening. Do you have the theme for your door, and what is it? The theme for our door is Frankenweenie. How did you decorate your door? So what we did is we cut out the letters to make the, um, the title of it, and then we cut out, used green pieces of paper to make like go dripping down in the moon. And then we took a big white piece of paper and we drew the cover art of it. And then we cut it out and then we're gonna tape, and then we taped it onto it. And then we have the whole sign. Um, are you confident that you will do well in the competition? I think so. I think it's a pretty good door and I think we'll do pretty good. What is the theme of your door? So the theme, the, theme of, the theme of our door is going to be basically about the Classes Club. So the Classes Club is an uh, eSports club and um, so we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to match that with um, our door and so what we're doing is we're basically doing a skeleton who's, be, who's pretty mad, he's angry so he's throwing, he's throwing his controller at something right now, we don't know yet. And uh, it's gonna say game over uh, somewhere around him. And it kind of matches up with him. So he sees a skeleton, he's dead. And in game over, you're kind of dead. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what our door is. How did you make your door? Uh, how do we make our door? Uh, we used c uh, c colored paper, uh, a skeleton, and our imagination. And uh, controllers too. Do you think you'll do well in the competition? Absolutely, we're gonna do so great. All right, and we're we're gonna do the best ever. Okay, we're gonna get first place. Like y'all are done for. Okay, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. What is the theme of your door? The theme is French Revolution, guillotine, blood, gore. There were seventeen thousand people who lost their heads or more than that during the French Revolution, so I think that's pretty creepy. And I was gonna do the catacombs in the bottom because they didn't have room for the bodies, but anyway, I just put a bunch of skulls down there. Also, the Heads Will Roll is one of my favorite songs to play when we learn about the French Revolution by the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. How did you make the door? So, a couple of students helped me after school, we got um, paper from Hobby Lobby, um, aluminum foil, and we worked on it um, after school two days, and then I brought it home and my kids helped me at the house. Do you think you'll do well in the competition? I think so, but there's a lot of really amazing doors that I've seen, and I have a couple that I think will win, but maybe it'll get in the top five. Here's a look at some of our favorite doors. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, that was interesting. Which was your favorite door, Sebastian? Mine was the Dead President's door. Now, let's talk about the advanced placement programs. The AP programs at Science Hill have skyrocketed, showing record-breaking numbers between 2022 and 2023. 35 students received the Advanced Placement Capstone Diploma. This helps students get skills like critical thinking, collaboration, and other skills needed for academic success. Additionally, Science Hill has had 76 students named AP Honor with distinction. This means the students received an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on five or more of these exams. There were also 33 students who finished AP Scholar with honors, which means students received an average score of at least 3.25 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on four or more of these exams. That's quite impressive. Let's move on to sports segment with Olivia and Israel. Good morning, Toppers. I'm Israel Spiker. And I'm Olivia Bean, and welcome to the Topper Sports Report. Today we'll be recapping some exciting sports events that happened these past few weeks. Starting off with two recent football games, 
that have been a success for the toppers. A win against Morrison Hamblin East on Friday, October 6th with an amazing score of 35-0 and a win against Daniel Boone on Thursday, October 19th with a score of 48-0. Great job, toppers. And don't forget about the upcoming away game against Dobbins Bennett on Friday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Best of luck, toppers. Speaking of football, on the 19th, we celebrated all of the seniors at Senior Night. Let's go to Cameron as he asks some questions to some of our topper football players. Welcome to Choppers in the Hall, where we get to know the people of Science Hill High School. This week's topic is about Senior Night, so without further ado, let's get started. What is your name? Uh, Matt Marsh. Uh, Jason Swartz. Tristan Smith. Davion Stewart. Gavin Aldridge. Uh, my name is Josiah McGinn. Uh, what has been your favorite memory at Science Hill High School? Uh, probably just playing football with my boys. Playing football with all my teammates and people of been playing with since middle school. Just creating memories on my boys. Probably my favorite memory is just playing football with my guys. Um, Probably just being able to play football with my uh, teammates that I grew up with. Probably homecoming. What is your best accomplishment? Um, Probably beating DB last year. Probably probably becoming a one-year starter last year, final year. Uh, Probably making all-conference last year and hopefully again this year. Probably making the all-conference team last year. Just growing from just being like just kind of as a small kid growing, just, just growing to be able to Moving to the starting role, I guess. It's just really good for me. What are you planning to do after high school? Uh, probably play football somewhere. Uh, I'm either going to go play football somewhere or just go be a student, study engineering. Um, attend North Greenville and play football. Uh, I plan on playing at Maribel College. Uh, right now, I'm planning to go to University of Tennessee and study sports medicine. Uh, probably to go to one of like couple, one of four universities I'm choosing right now. I'm major in uh, graphic communications or graphic design. Uh, did you enjoy senior night? Uh, yeah. I did. I think it was a great night. I did. Beating Boone 48 to 0 was really, really a good. Yeah, I did enjoy senior night. Yeah, that was great. Yes, I did. What was your favorite part about senior night? Beating Boone 48 to 0. Probably just winning, honestly. That was the main goal. Probably laying a big hit on that corner. Uh, just beating Boone, blowing him up. Just getting to beat Boone. I mean, they. We owed him that after last year. My favorite part about senior night was probably uh, just seeing our whole city just supporting us and the group of, and our group of guys. It was a good group, and we put in a lot of work to get here. Thank you. Thank you. This has been it for Tappers in the Hall, and I bet you all in the studio. Thank you, Cameron. We love to hear from our seniors about their plans for the future. Good luck to you all. The girls' soccer team finished off their season at Substate with a hard loss against Bearden 6-1 on the 21st. To reach Substate, the Lady Toppers won district with wins over Boone 6-0 at Dobbins Bennett 3-1, followed by a win in regionals over Sevier County 9-0 and a loss in the region finals against DB. We can't wait to see what the girls' soccer team will do next year. The 2023 Science Hill goal season is a wrap. 11th place finish for Rachel Smith individually and a top 10 finish for Will Sanders. Awesome job to the Science Hill golf team. The Lady Toppers Volleyball finished off their season with a loss at Regionals to Westridge 3-0 on the 10th and a loss against Maryville 3-0 on the 12th. And that wraps up the Topper Report. I'm Israel Spiker. And I'm Olivia Bean. Thanks for joining us today. Back to you guys in the studio. Go, Go Toppers. Toppers! That's quite a success for our team, wouldn't you say? I certainly would. Speaking of success, Leighton Hart, Shivan Jane, Sophia Stone, Dakota Ward, Selena Wheeler, and Ryan Zang all earned perfect ACT scores. If you went to the Topper Trick or Treat last night, what'd you dress up as? I was a skeleton with a Michael Myers mask. In other news, FCA hosted Fields of Faith on Wednesday, October 18th. Let's go to Zach and to learn more about the event. Good morning, Toppers. The Science Hill High School FCA Fields of Faith event took place last week on Wednesday, October 18th. Many students gathered in the Topper Nation Gymnasium for an evening filled with worship, music, student testimonies, and to hear the guest speaker of the night, Josh Little. We interviewed students that were involved and attended this event to learn more about it and to get a deeper understanding of how it impacted those who participated. I'm here with... I'm Danny Naren, and I'm a senior. I'm Henry Hance, and I'm a senior as well. So what exactly is Fields of Faith? Fields of Faith is an event put on by FCA. It's a national event taking place you know, at high schools across the country. And it's just a night for uh, students to lead worship, um, share testimonies, and uh, you know, share the good news of God and, and worship and fellowship. Awesome. Uh, what does Fields of Faith mean to you guys? To me, it was a great time. 
Um, I feel encouraged when I'm around other believers and we're worshiping together. How was the turnout? The turnout was really great this year. You know, obviously with COVID, FCA had to kind of take a break for a little while, so it's kind of slowly growing back. But I, I think it's the largest it's been since COVID. We had lots of different people from different schools, as Danny said, which was really exciting. But great turnout. They had really fun. Can you tell me anything about the guest speaker of the night, Josh Little? Yeah, so he worked at First Christian Church for a little while and then moved away working at another church in the Midwest. He recently just moved back to Johnson City, and he's now uh, the head of the Ministry Leadership Program over at Milligan University. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a wonderful person. Uh, he, I know him just kind of through some, like, him his work at uh, First Christian, which is where I go. Uh, wonderful person, wonderful speaker. Awesome. So I heard that you played music for the event. Um, how was it playing music in front of so many people? It was awesome. I mean, I've had some experience doing that mm -hmm. before because uh, I play on the worship band at my church. So it was fairly similar to that. It can be kind of stressful, but once you shift that thinking, it just kind of becomes that a powerful worshipful experience. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really fun. What was the rehearsal process like? We got the songs like about a couple weeks out just to practice by ourselves uh, and then we came together as a band on Sunday, practiced together and then about 30 minutes before, or about an hour before the event we had, ran a full run through. All right, awesome. Um, so you guys had mentioned something about student testimonies. Mm -hmm. um, what, if any, if you care to share, stuck out to you? Uh, neither one of us did but there were several other really beneficial um, testimonies from students here, ranging from topics like depression, anxiety, acceptance, love, abuse, um, things that, you know, are somewhat taboo, but we all deal with to some extent. Um, I think there was four or five, and they were really well executed, great presentation, and um, they helped all of us feel like, you know, we're not alone. Did you guys have a favorite part of the night? Uh, for me, most definitely the worship. The message was great, the testimonies were great, but I just feel some type of way when I'm worshiping the king. No, I, sure. I think the worship, I mean, I was playing in the worship bands, <laughs> yeah. and playing music is like something I love to do. Just kind of echoing everything Danny said. Just felt super powerful. Yeah. Um, and would you guys encourage people to attend Fields of Faith next year and the years after? I would encourage it for um, believers or non-believers. It can't go wrong. Awesome. Well, Aim into that. Amen. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for your time. <laughs> and. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Zach. Sounds like it was a successful event. Now let's hear about this week's featured club from Jager. How's it going, everyone? My name's Jager, and we're here with the Ultimate Frisbee Club. What's your name, and what do you do here at Science Hill? Mr. Laviano, and occasionally I teach things. Awesome. And uh, what is Ultimate Frisbee? Ultimate Frisbee is a combination of like basketball and soccer and football. It's uh, different than disc golf. A lot of running, a lot of fun. Do you have to have any past experience to join? Nope, just have two feet that move. Hopefully you can catch things. And that's about it. Awesome. We have a remind group that lets you know when our next game is. We usually play Mondays and Fridays after school here in this field, three to four. And uh, no experience necessary. Awesome. Uh, how many people typically show up to Ultimate Frisbee? Yeah, about seven to ten, sometimes more, sometimes less. But if we get a group of four and four, five and five, that's a lot of fun. Awesome. Okay, uh, how long have you been a sponsor of Ultimate Frisbee? I'm the original sponsor and the current sponsor, and this is our 15th year. Okay, and do you need to bring any equipment with you when you first join? Nope, just limbs, and that's about it. Awesome. And uh, when and where does Ultimate Frisbee meet? That would be here in the band practice field, Mondays and Fridays, unless the weather uh, is a no-go. But we play all year round, especially in the cold, from after school from 3 to about 4. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you guys at the studio. Well, that was entertaining, but let's move on to Kids Against Hunger. The AV team has reached out to the Kids Against Hunger team and is proud to say that volunteers from Science Hill have joined the team. Let's see what's happening. Kids Against Hunger is a big umbrella organization, and they have what we call satellites, like what we're doing here all over the country. And meals are packed, and they're sent to over 60 different countries. But they're also kept locally in the states where they're needed. And we typically ship to Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. But we're totally volunteer run. So what's going on here today, they're going to pack probably 80,000 meals. 
that will give us that opportunity to ship them out. It's at no cost to anybody. Um, we're fully fundraised in order to be able to do what we do and then run it with volunteers. Well, this is a really important event to me personally just because of the organization. I have some history with the organization. But it's also an important event for our school. It gives our students a chance to serve others, not only locally, but even a little bit globally. Um, and, you know, that's one of the important things we want our students to learn and to have an opportunity to participate in is service. Serving other students, serving other people, serving other families, that's a really important part of the vision of our school, what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to teach our students, what we're trying to model for our students. So for those reasons, it's a really important day. It's a great time for our kids to learn about service. We have a lot of kids that do a lot of service, and it's a, a great opportunity for them to participate in more. And then we have some students that maybe haven't had the opportunity to be in service very much, so we want to give them that opportunity also. But days like this just are really humbling, humbling to me as a principal because I see the excitement that the kids have, their willingness to come out here and work, and just what they're able to do to impact others. Just a very proud day for me to be the principal of Science Hill to have all these kids show up on a day they didn't have to come to school, but to come out here and, and serve and serve joyfully. It's just a really, really good thing for me to see. I really appreciate it. It makes me really proud. All sports teams, like every diverse sports team, every club comes, and we all have a station, we all have tables, and we all are just packing food for over the winter because it is starting to get really cold out. So just for homeless people, just for everybody that needs food for this winter. I think it's really important for everybody here just get everybody together, all the sports teams and clubs and all that, all those different things. And um, it just really feels good just to give back to the community and you know, even across the country and nationwide and worldwide, give them back. Isn't that incredible? Thank you so much to the volunteers who helped this amazing organization. And thank you everyone for watching. This is going to conclude our Topper Report. Go, Go Toppers! toppers.